Well, hello, everyone. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to our exhibitor uh, preparation seminar. And the title of this session is Running Up the Score, Enhancing Your Exhibitor ROI at MetalCon. Um, many of you are probably familiar with my voice uh, because I've left you plenty of messages, but this is Mark Swaggerty. I am the exhibit sales manager here for the MetalCon Trade Show, and thank you again for joining us. Why don't I introduce us uh, to uh, the team? Of course, I've given you my introduction and, and my email address is there as well, mark at metalcon.com. Joining us on this call are Ilda Prifty, our sponsorship sales manager, and her email address is iprifti at psmj.com. Stephanie Haney, the project manager from the Expo Group is with us. We're pleased and happy to have her with us. Her email address is right there as well, shaney at theexpogroup.com. And many of you, if you haven't spoken to him either by email or by phone, um, you will be speaking to David Weaver, the senior manager of customer service for the Expo Group. His email address is here as well, dweaver at theexpogroup.com. And the gang's all here, so why don't we begin? You hold the keys to your ROI. MetalCon provides an exceptional platform to connect, engage, and expand your business. And with the right preparation, you hold the keys to unlocking your trade show success and maximizing your ROI. The purpose of this session is for us to empower you and give you some really good ideas on how you can take those keys, stick them in the ignition, and start the engine to make this trade show hum and be successful for you. Now, time is money, and your pre-show prep can save you time and money on site. And with that, I want to bring in David Weaver, because much of what you do before the show can take away from time-consuming things that you'll see other people waiting in line to deal with at the show. So with that, I'm going to let David Weaver talk about some of the important things you can do to address your situation before you get to the show, save you time, and ultimately save you money. Take it away, Dave. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate it. So yes, again, my name is David and I am going to be the head of customer service at MetalCon 2024. So to start things off, I just wanted to give you some tips from an expert exhibitor. So some tips just right from the start here. Carpet or flooring is required for the show. You do need to have something that is going to cover up that concrete floor at the convention center. That is something that you can rent from us or you can bring it yourself. If you are bringing it yourselves, just let us know. Do not forget about cleaning and power. Those are not included with your booth space. So for cleaning, this is a show with a lot of construction you know, going on. There's a lot of moving parts, lots of forklifts driving all around. So even though you may be bringing your pieces and they may be clean when you first set them down, there is a lot of debris and things that can be flying during move-in. So make sure that you don't forget about ordering cleaning so that everything is all clean and ready to go so that everything looks really nice once your attendees arrive. Power as well. If you need something plugged in, you do need to order those outlets in advance. So do not forget about ordering that if you need it for charging any laptops, phones, or for any machinery. Make sure that you reach out to us so that we can get that power in the booth space for you. Ship early for peace of mind. Remember that the advanced warehouse is open October 7th through the 18th. If you are shipping in anything to the show, it's highly recommended that you use that advanced warehouse uh, for a couple of reasons. One, it is a larger window from the 7th to the 18th than trying to ship it direct when it's just the move-in days. So you get a larger window for your carrier to arrive and deliver those pieces. And two, you get to know ahead of time and confirm that the pieces have arrived versus being at show site and having just a day to go before the show opens and scrambling to get things in. So get those things in early to the warehouse if you can, just save you some peace of mind there. Make sure that your freight is labeled with your company name and booth number. 
Now, it seems self-explanatory, but we've got a lot of pieces that are coming in. We want to make sure that it gets to you. So make sure that it is labeled with your company name and your booth number. If you do not have labels of your own, we do have online some advanced warehouse shipping labels and direct shipping labels already prepped for you. You just need to print those out, write in the company name and booth number, and slap those on the sides of your freight. Consolidate small packages. Less small boxes, less chances they're misplaced during shipping. If you're going to be shipping in a bunch of different pieces, let's say some swag from all over the place, if at all possible, I highly recommend you consolidate those into one large piece. It's a lot easier to find one large box than a bunch of small little boxes that are coming in from all directions. So if at all possible, consolidate into one piece. That's also one less thing that you're going to have to confirm has arrived, right? If you have to confirm 20 pieces versus one, it's going to be a lot easier for you. Order your labor early and check in on site. If you need labor such as booth labor, suspended sign labor, or forklift labor, let us know that in advance. If you let us know in advance, we can make sure that there is going to be somebody ready for you at that time, and you don't have to wait in lines at show site at my desk asking for some of those things to be available. So get that order in early so we're aware that you're coming. And another thing to remember is that that labor you do need to check in for when you are on site. So if you order it for 2 p.m., they do not go out automatically at 2 p.m. They're just reserved for you at that time. So you do need to come into the exhibitor service desk and let me know that you're ready at 2 o'clock so we can send those people out. Don't get stuck in line. Fill out your outbound shipping info online. If you are shipping anything out from the show, there's a very simple form called a material handling agreement. That material handling agreement or MHA that you fill out with me says two basic things. Who is picking up your freight and where it is going. That way we know that they're allowed to take your stuff. Uh, that form you can go ahead and pre-fill out online before the show and then it'll be printed out with some sticker labels and put into your booth on the last day of the show. And all you'll need to do is then label your freight, sign the form, and turn it into my desk. Alternatively, if you don't fill it in before the show, you have to come wait in a line at my desk, get up there, get the form, fill it out, and then come back and turn it in. So it just saves you a little bit of that time there on site. It's also good if you have somebody that is going to be running your booth on site at the end of the show that may not be privy to all the information as where is this going, who's picking it up. If you know that information and can fill it out beforehand, your team on site does not have to worry and stress about it. Need a carrier? Speak to the official show carriers, Expo Logistics and EAX Worldwide. If you need a shipper to get your freight to the show, we do have Expo Logistics and EAX Worldwide that are working with us directly on the show. Their information is also online for you so that you can reach out before the show. But if you need to make a game day decision or you have some questions on site, they will be present as well at the exhibitor service desk. They will have desks set up there as well during and after the show. Those carriers are there the entire time. So it's a good option if you don't want to worry about making sure your carrier arrives at the specific time or move out. These two are there the entire time. And last but definitely not least, the Expo Group is here to help. So stop by the Exhibitor Service Desk in the back of the 300 aisle. Myself and my wonderful team are going to be there the entirety of the show. So if you're there and you're lost, you have any questions at all, feel free to stop by and we can help out. And I'll pass it back over to Mark. Outstanding. Outstanding. And Dave, thank you so much uh, for that information. Very informative. Let me reiterate, don't get stuck in line. Now, Dave gave us a lot of really good and usable information. If you have any questions, it is so much easier for you to shoot Dave an email, dweaver at theexpogroup.com, or give David Weaver a phone call. It's easier to do that now than to get stuck in line waiting to talk to him at the show. He will gladly go over any of these other points, elaborate further, and again, time is money. We're here to help, and David is certainly well qualified to do so. Thanks again, David, for your help. You know, um, we're going to move on. Um, here we are. 
taking a look at the playing field. We've got an extremely busy show. Um, I'm going to take my cursor and point out the deck. That's the first thing that you see when you walk onto the show floor is the deck, booth number 1300. Um, over to the lower left-hand portion of the floor, um, directly or next to the seating area where the food court is, is one of our education rooms. It is focused and dedicated to building performance. It is the Building Performance Learning Center, lower left-hand portion of the, of the floor plan. Um, above that, in booth number 417, and it uh, should be coming up green on your screen, is the Design District. That area is sponsored by our friends at PPG. And we thank them for their support in bringing the Design District to the fore. Above that, to the upper left, is our Best Practices Learning Center. That is education focused on best practices. Coming up here towards the middle, in the back is what's referred to as the network area at the exchange. That's where speed networking is going to be taking place on Wednesday, October 30th. Let me highlight and emphasize this as I point these areas out. When you go to the metalcon.com website and you land on the homepage, the tabs directly at the top of the homepage, metalcon.com, one of them is the highlights tab. Once you click that highlights tab, you can get additional information on the areas that I'm pointing out here on the show floor. Just as similarly, when you go to the homepage, you can click the education tab to find out what the sessions are that are taking place in some of these areas that I'm pointing out on the playing field. We have the main theater, which is right there in the center of the show floor, 1147. That's where our keynotes are taking place. If we move over to the right, the upper right, we have a learning center for technical know-how. That's the technical know-how learning center. Directly below that, is the MCA Metal Mastery demo area. And just below that is the Metal Con Training Zone, sponsored by our good friends, Sherwin Williams. And we certainly want to thank them for their support. And again, as I just mentioned earlier, um, I've pointed out what's going on on the playing field. I've pointed out where these areas are located. But again, all you need to do when you get to the metalcon.com website is to either click the highlights section to get more information on what's taking place in these areas or the education tab on our homepage, uh, which can be found on our website to find out what education is actually taking place in these learning centers. So again, it's important for you to know what the playing field looks like so that you understand where attendees may be going. And of course, if you've got staff, extra staff in your booth, you may want to send some of your staff people over to some of these sessions, especially if they're talking about topics that are related to the goods and the services that your company provides. You can do some networking and generate some leads that way as well. We're going to move on. Free tools at your disposal. You know, free is something that I always like to, my ears perk up. So whenever somebody is talking to me about free, why don't we just learn a little bit more about what we have at our disposal in order to help us maximize our ROI here at MetalCon. First and foremost, you've got complimentary access to the Exhibitor Hub. The Exhibitor Hub is where you can update your company's description, upload your products, videos, press releases, and show specials. And you can make it easier for prospects to find your company website and social media accounts. The Exhibitor Hub 
is where attendees that have registered to visit this show go to learn more about the companies that they're planning on visiting at the show. What we're providing you free of charge is an area within the Exhibitor Hub to help enhance what the attendees see when they go to research your company. So these are all opportunities that you can take to make it easier to sell to the attendees who are checking you out before they stop by and pay a visit to your booth. So take advantage also of the matchmaking feature. You can find recommended attendees with similar interests, schedule meetings, make connections, and expand your pipeline before, let me emphasize, before stepping foot on the show floor. You can start making connect work, start making connect connections and networking with attendees today. Now, if everything that I said sounds Greek to you, let me point out our sales and marketing coordinator, a very valuable member of the MetalCon team, and her name is Amanda Carlo. Her email address is listed right here, amanda at metalcon.com. And what you can do if you have any questions about taking advantage of all of these services is send Amanda an email so that you can connect, 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 and take advantage of everything that's at your disposal free of charge. Hit Amanda Carlo up. She's here for you. So let's start talking about how you can generate leads before the show opens. You can invite people and prospects to see you at the show by using your unique discount codes to invite customers, prospects, and VIPs so that you can promote your presence at MetalCon. Um, you should have received from us information on your unique discount codes. You're allotted a certain number of those where you could just tell your people to invite them to the show and they get free registration to visit you at the show. And then you have also an unlimited number of discount codes where people can actually save money on the registration by using your company's unique discount codes. If you have questions on that, let me circle back to Amanda Carlo. Amanda, at, let's go back and check her out here. Amanda at metalcon.com. And she can give you information on your discount codes as well as your free passes that you can use to invite people to visit you at the show. Now that we've gotten that out of the way as far as discount codes and free passes, Training your all-star team is essential to having a successful show. And it is so important for everybody to have message discipline. We all need to be saying the same thing when we begin to train our team to engage with our attendees so that we convey the key messages. And as you go about getting this across to your team, it's important for us to emphasize, if you're not aiming for anything, you'll settle for anything. So why don't we define our goals? Let's determine before we get to the show, how many leads do we wanna generate on a given day? And then let's talk about your company's unique value proposition. Everybody in your booth needs to be able to clearly articulate why they should choose your company over a competitor. And then as we make sure that we're clear on our value proposition, as well as defining goals, let's set some KPIs for the players that are in your booth. We've got the ability either to collect cards or you have the unique ability to scan the badges. So let's talk about maybe setting goals, friendly competition with the salespeople in your booth to collect how many cards did you collect today or how many scans did you guys get? 
And that's always nice to have a little bit of friendly competition in the booth in terms of helping you to, to gain and achieve your goals. And then it's all about practice, practice, practice. Once you've set your goals, once you've set the message discipline so that everybody is saying the same thing, role-playing is essential to ensure that the staff is capable of recalling the information on the fly. And again, we've gone over our value proposition, but it's also nice to be able to be familiar with the features and benefits of your company's goods and or services. You should be able to recall that on the fly. We also want you to include frequently asked questions preparation. You know, you can get some of this from your salespeople that are in the field. You don't have to make this up. Your salespeople in the field are very familiar with the frequently asked questions that they get asked on a sales presentation. So make sure that the people in your booth are familiar with those common questions. And then everybody should be fluent in your special show promotions. You're at the show, you're probably offering a discount, a promotion. Everybody should be able to include that in their 30 to 45 second elevator pitch as they're engaging with the people that they're talking to at the show. And once again, practice before the show so that you know. Practice before the show so that you know. Be prepared. Now, your booth is your office for three days, okay? You paid for the booth space. It's your office. We want you to create a welcoming environment at your booth. Make sure that your booth space is open and inviting. We're not talking about creating a barrier of tables right there at the beginning of your booth because, again, it's your office. You want people to walk into your office. Take the tables with your show literature and move them to the back of your booth. That makes your space open, inviting, easy for people to enter and explore. You want to assign somebody in your booth to scan the badges. Make sure that you've got somebody on lead retrieval and scanning badges. You want those people to be the open and engaging, welcoming people standing sort of on the brink of where your booth begins and where the aisle begins. And then you wanna make sure that you've got clear branding and logo and messaging prominently displayed and easily recognizable from a distance. If you've got any design work or branding down towards the bottom of your booth, um, if you can't see it from a distance, if your customers can't see it from a distance, you want to do what you can to make sure that you're raising it up so that people can see it at eye level and can identify it. And if you have space to create specific zones within your booth for different activities. Now, if you're in a 10 by 10 booth, this may be difficult. This may be the reason why you want to see me in the sales booth to upgrade to a larger booth, because those with 10 by 20s, 10 by 30s, and 20 by 20s are able to carve out areas within their booths where you've got people that you walk, your salespeople walk them over to talk to somebody for meetings and that type of engagement. You are able to direct people that you're talking to into another area of your booth, especially if you've got product on display to see the product demonstrations. And then you've got areas within your booth where you could have your material spread out for information sharing. Um, some of that can be accomplished in a 10 by 10 booth. It's a little bit more challenging, but when you get into the larger booths, this is one of the reasons why people buy larger booths. You're able to create this type of activity within the booth. The area where you have somebody over here who is the product specialist. 
the area where you can point out the equipment or a demonstration or a video playing on your video monitor, and then perhaps an area where there's some, some meetings that can take place. And then if all you have is a 10 by 10 booth, this is where you've taken that table that you've moved to the back of your booth and you walk your prospects to the back of your booth. You hand them the literature. If you haven't scanned them, you take their business card or scan them at that point, And then you sort of catch and release. Now, I've spent a lot of time talking about your booth and sort of some of the enhance, some of the things that you can do within it. But I want to bring David Weaver back into this discussion because the Expo Group has more to do than just table, chairs, carpet, and electricity or an extension cord. Um, Dave, can you sort of drop in here and talk about some of the other things that you can do to help beautify an exhibitor's booth from a 10 by 10 booth all the way up to one of the larger displays? Absolutely. Thank you, Mark. Yeah, I'd love this talking about the booth being your office. Absolutely true. You're going to be spending a lot of time in here. You want to make sure that it's comfortable for you. And you also want to make sure that it is a destination for your attendees, right? You want them to want to come to your booth space. You've done the work. You've provided the beautiful product. You know, you've got the sales and everything going. You want to make sure that it's fun for them when they get there as well. So some things that we offer that can help you with that. Uh, starting off, you know, we talked about carpet, but we also have different custom carpet that is available, some very plush options, and carpet padding. That is something that can be great for you, and you're standing up all day. Those show site floors, they're not very comfortable to stand on. It's a very hard floor, right? So if you have some of that padding or that plush carpet, it's going to make you feel comfortable standing there for three days. And it's also going to help the attendees feel comfortable when they walk into your booth space. They're going to want to spend more time when their feet aren't hurting. Um, specialty furniture is another thing that we offer. You know, we want these people to feel invited and want to spend time in our booth. We have some soft seating options that are available if you wanted to set up a little lounge like area with some couches, some plush chairs, things like that, as well as, you know, some of those specialty pieces like display cases and things. If you've got things that you want to show off or you want to create some of those soft spaces, we've got lots of custom furniture that you can order for your space to create whatever you can imagine, whatever type of space you want to create. And graphics, we do have the ability to create graphics for you. If you have some ideas of things that you want to present, you want to have those logos made, but you don't know where to start, we've got that ability to create you all kinds of signage and things that you would need in your booth space to really stand out and draw people in. And of course, we have different audio visual options that are available. You know, Mark mentioned that people, you know, may have ideas that they want to run videos on monitors. Uh, they want to, you know, maybe if you're a larger space, you want to have some sort of speakers and things to address an audience. You know, those are things that we do have available as well. Having some of those bright and flashy things in your booth space is definitely going to draw people in. If you are a larger booth as well and you want to have a large hanging sign or a suspended sign, that is something that is a great idea when you're wanting to bring people in from afar. It's a large floor out there, and if you've got something that can hang above your booth to draw those people to your area, definitely take advantage of it. So make sure that you're looking into that. And if you're really starting from scratch here, from a smaller booth to a larger booth, and you don't have an exhibit, but you want to have one of those nice back walls or things like that, we do sell rental exhibits. So if you want to start from scratch and have a wall that's pre-built that you can throw your graphics onto, we do offer that and we offer it in a many different styles. So if you have a certain look that you're wanting to achieve, definitely take a look at our rental exhibits to see what we have to make that possible. Outstanding. Dave, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Again, the Expo Group is so much more than just table, chairs, and carpet. And, um, you know, everybody has to start somewhere. And the beautiful thing about this is, you know, if you're looking and you're a 10 by 10 booth and, you know, you wanna buy an exhibit booth that you can perhaps take to other shows and things of that nature, the Expo Group is here for you as well in order to get you started. And who knows, three, four, five years from now, you go from a 10 by 10 to a 10 by 20, and then the sky is the limit. You know, I want to take a moment at this time 
because we're talking about your booth being your office for three days. I want to bring in um, one of the newest additions to our team. Her name is Ilda Prifty, and she is our sponsorship sales manager. One of the advantages that Ilda brings to this team is she helps our exhibitors drive traffic to their booths over the course of these three days because she's the one who sells the sponsorships at this show. Now, many of them are already taken for this year, but guess what? You'll be hearing from Ilda next year when we start selling this show in Las Vegas. I want to give Ilda an opportunity to introduce herself, talk to you about some of the things that she has made available to other exhibitors. Oh, and by the way, I know you get a lot of email from us here at MetalCon, but Ilda recently sent out an email from her sponsorship area about a flash sale. So there may be still things that you can take advantage of to drive traffic to your booth, or should I say your office for the next three days. And these are things that are not just available for the big guys. If you're here in a 10 by 10 booth and you want to kick it up a notch, Ilda might be able to help you. So at this time, I want to turn the floor over to Ilda just to introduce herself. Go ahead, Ilda. Thanks so much, Mark, for that introduction. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Ilda Prifty. I am the sponsor sponsorship sales manager here at MetalCon. I just started here at MetalCon, um, and this will be my first, first time being on the show floor. So I'm really excited to see everyone in Atlanta. Um, we still have some opportunities left for this year, and anybody that's still interested, feel free to reach out to me. Um, again, my email is iprifty at psmj.com. Um, some of the ways that I'm helping exhibitors this year is with sponsorship, obviously, and we have sponsorships that vary in price range, and it varies if you are interested in doing things pre-show or on the show floor with visibility. Um, we have things that range anywhere between um, having a Oktoberfest in your office for three days, or we have golf simulators that you could also sponsor. There are different bench uh, signs that you can sponsor. So there are many different ways that you can have your presence really be known um, on the show floor or before the show starts. Um, it's a great way to kind of make yourself stand out when there are so many exhibitors um, at MetalCon. So feel free to reach out. I'm happy to help in any way. Outstanding. Thank you so much, Ilda. You know, um, I'm not the only one that's going to be leaving you voicemail. Uh, you'll be hearing from me and you'll be hearing from Ilda, um, especially with opportunity, <laughs> opportunities to help. So thanks for chiming in. You know, thank you. we're going to move on to executing a game plan to score deals. At the end of the day, this comes down to some simple common sense stuff. I mean, stuff that I really shouldn't say, but I will say only because it breaks my heart when I'm walking on the show floor and, and I see people committing some of the obvious faux pas. Don't eat in your booth. Don't. Just don't. I mean, we've got a seating area where you can go and sit and eat, but don't eat in your booth. Um, make eye contact with your prospects. Look them in the eye. Look engaged. And I capitalize this. Listen. Many of, that, many of the times, the people that you're talking to will talk them into a sale, talk themselves into a sale. Just listen to them. All right. Um, advanced level um, stuff when it comes to executing your game plan. Ask open-ended questions. And remember that that role playing that you did before the show, this is where it comes in handy. Ask the open-ended questions. Take advantage of the work that you did to prepare yourselves to be at the show and then let it take its course. I got into this a little bit earlier, but I really want to emphasize this as part of your game plan. At the end of the day, whether you're in a 10 by 10 or whether you're in one of our monster booths, go fishing. Get almost outside of your booth into the aisle where you're literally bumping into people. Initiate a conversation with them. Walk them back to your booth. 
Give them the material that you have placed on the table in the back of your booth. Scan their badge. Um, take their business card. Shake their hand. Release the prospect and get back out into the aisle and go fishing again. Go fishing. Catch them. Reel them in. Hand them some literature. Exchange business cards. Scan the person and catch and release and go fishing throughout the show. Another important thing to do, especially with hot or warm prospects, take notes in the lead scanning app. If you're doing your job properly, you're gonna talk to so many people that you're not gonna remember what you said to who. So take notes in your lead scanning app, or if you're old school like me, I have to write things on the back of the business card so I can recall what I spoke about. I can put hot, 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 call first, whatever. Uh, just stuff because by the time this is all said and done, you should have a mountain of leads. So taking notes in the lead scanning app or making notes on the back of the business card is essential. And when it's all said and done, You've done the show. You've taken all of our pointers. Don't leave your dessert on the table. Close, close, close. Follow up with your leads quickly. Don't let your coffee get cool. Once you get um, done with the show, you know, you want to get your post show plan together. And it's a good idea maybe to come to the show with that plan in place before you leave for the show. Write your follow-up to your on-site prospects before you leave for MetalCon. Have that email ready to go. Now, the cool thing is, if you've done the lead scanning, you're probably going, you're going to get a list with the email fields and the name fields and all that stuff delineated so that you could just upload this stuff and just hit boom, right? Hit a button. So having your follow-up letter for your on-site prospects written before you leave for MetalCon enables you to simply upload that stuff into your database, hit a button, and send it out. Um, make sure that you centralize all of your lead data and categorize them, as I was getting into earlier, with hot, warm, cold, based on their engagement and their interest levels. And then segment your leads by demographics, by what products they're interested in, and what decision-making role the person is that you spoke to is. Score and prioritize these leads. And make sure that you've done this based on their to purchase and Assign these leads to the right sales team members for follow-up. Track and nurture these leads over time, adjusting your strategies as needed. The important thing to remember is some of these deals are going to go down really quickly, and it's going to be easy to identify that they came from MetalCon. But it's important for you to make sure that the leads that you get from MetalCon are tagged in your database as MetalCon. Why? Because you guys do email promotion, phone calls, a number of different things with these leads throughout the course of the year leading up to your participation in next year's MetalCon show. And some of these deals from the leads that you generated at MetalCon are going to come later. But it's important to make sure that MetalCon gets the credit when those leads that turn into deals show up because this comes to ROI. The ROI that you get from exhibiting in MetalCon is getting these leads into your database and either closing them immediately or closing them further down the road. Because what you want to do is you want to be able to say MetalCon delivered X, Y, Z when it comes to the sales. 
So when you tag this stuff in your database as a metal con lead, then you're able to say, hey, we didn't sell this person in week one or week two after the show, but three months after the event, because we had this person in our database and our sales guy was following up with him and he was sending regular emails, this thing still came out of the pipeline as a result of us being at the show and pumping this lead into our database. So using all of these processes are designed to ensure that you maximize the value of the leads that you generate during the show and you focus your efforts where they're most likely to result in conversions. Conversions immediately after the show or conversions over time. At this point, we've reached the, the end of our presentation. I am here for your questions and I welcome you to email me. My name again is Mark Swaggerty. My email address is mark at metalcon.com. At this time, I wanna thank um, our team that were here on this call. I wanna thank David Weaver for his contribution. I wanna thank Ilda Prifty, our sponsorship salesperson for her contribution. Um, Stephanie Haney, the project manager at the Expo Group for her contribution. And I, I should also mention David Weaver, who you'll be seeing at the show and hopefully talk to before the show from the Expo Group as well. Once again, any questions, by all means, feel free to email me. Thank you so much for joining our presentation. We're looking forward to an extremely successful show in just a few weeks. See you at the show. Come by the sales office. If you haven't purchased a booth in the 2025 show, do so. Otherwise, see me on the show floor in the sales office. Talk to you soon, either at the show, on the phone, or via email. Goodbye, and thanks again.